Welcome to a Stuart Beam Engine Restoration Part 1. The initial inspection to assess the overall condition of the engine in order to estimate the cost of repairs. This Stuart Beam engine would appear to be an early Stuart Beam engine. It's quite different to some other ones that I've seen. The spokes on the flywheel are not like this anymore. On this engine, the crankshaft is a larger diameter compared to the crankshafts of other beam engines that I've worked on, like the one I'm using as a reference. The parts that I'm holding in my hand are from another old Stuart beam engine. As you can see, the flywheel is of the earlier type. It has a gunmetal crankweb and a smaller crankshaft. The crankweb on this engine is made from cast iron. Normally, in the initial assessment of an engine, I do just that. I have a good look at everything and see if it works. I can see many small problems and there's a lot of slop in the valve gear. I will be making a second video to show all of the problems with this engine. And the good news, if the customer's watching this video, is it's not going to be a very expensive repair. There are lots of small problems, all of which need rectifying. Time to connect some compressed air and see how it runs, not forgetting to lubricate every moving part first. One of the things the customer mentioned to me was there was some side play in the beam. This is actually quite normal, I'll look into that in due course. Almost finished the oiling marathon and it's time to turn on the compressed air supply. Model beam engines should not sound like this. One that I rebuilt a while back is so quiet and believe it or not some viewers complained because they couldn't hear it running. Here I'm using a small hammer. You might be thinking, why am I doing this? I'm doing this to see whether the valve gear is firmly fixed. Sometimes if you do this, the valve gear will go completely out of sync. One thing I noticed on the engine, and you can see it in this slow motion clip, is there's some play on the primary shaft that drives the valve gear. The flywheel is loose, and the pulley is loose. So what I'm going to do is remove the grub screws before I break them off. And I'm going to replace every grub screw with an Allen socket head grub screw because the slot-headed ones always seem to break. Here's my box of small Allen keys and small grub screws and bits and pieces, and I found some suitable ones. This is the slot-headed grub screw from the flywheel. I'll use that as a pattern to shorten the Allen head grub screw to fit. This is a lot better. It's far less likely to snap off in the hole, and it will grip the crankshaft very firmly, unlike the original slot-headed screw. The next of the slot headed grub screws is this particularly chewed up one that allows adjustment of the eccentric sheave which controls the valve timing. I've seen so many slot headed grub screws in this application with one side broken off. As with the flywheel I'm going to shorten this grub screw and fit it into the eccentric sheave. I haven't really rotated the crankshaft so if I fit this grub screw the timing should be just about the same as it was when I received the engine. To get the best results from a reciprocating steam engine, whether it's a traction engine, a steam locomotive, or just a stationary engine, making sure the valve timing is correct is very important. While I was working in this area, I noticed the nut that holds the crank pin in place was vibrating loose. I thought that now would be a good time to put this right, so I gently held the end of it with a pair of pliers to keep it stationary and nipped up the nut. If I get the job of repairing this engine, I will apply some thread lock to the nut on the crank pin. Here I have a suitable grub screw to fit the pulley to the crankshaft. Once again it needs to be shortened. Normally I shorten small grub screws by having them on the end of the allen key and holding them against my one inch belt sander until they become the correct length. With these essential parts secured it's time to apply some compressed air again. That's interesting, with everything secured it now sounds like a machine gun, especially at high speed. I think it's time to look at the beam, because as I mentioned earlier the customer reported that there is some side to side play, and yes there is but not very much, but to stop all of this entirely I will fit a couple of silicone o-rings, one at each side. The customer also mentioned that he thought the connecting rod was bent, but I don't really see that at the moment. With the o-rings fitted and the top caps replaced, it's time for a good oiling. 
One good thing about using silicone o-rings in this position is they act as an oil seal and because they're currently a bit on the dry side I'm applying some oil to the actual o-rings. With the side plate eliminated it's time to try the engine again. As I'm watching the flywheel going up and down it does not appear to be bent at all. The reason for the knocking is that the valve timing is not set correctly but it's not as simple as that I can see and hear other problems on this engine that need rectifying. I'll cover the extra problems in part two. I started to run the engine again and then this happened. The nut fell off the end of the pin on the beam and one of the parts of the watts paddle on motion jammed the engine. I knew there was going to be a problem in this area because when I looked at the beam and the two uneven washers and the fact that the pin was a bit short it was only going to be a matter of time before the nut vibrated off because if you tighten the nut you can't tighten it against the shoulder on the pin. Instead, the nut just clamps the piece of motion work very tightly. This is a simple fix. A new pin will rectify the problem. For the moment, though, I'm going to use some Loctite 543 thread locker to hold it in place. That's the blue stuff. Every one of the Loctite products that I use has an entirely different application. Very important not to get them mixed up. Using the video to run the engine in slow motion is quite useful. I can hear the engine wheezing at normal speed, but it's really bad at this speed. What's causing that? There's something wrong in the valve chest. If you listen carefully to the sound in these slow motion clips, you can hear the knock that occurs once every revolution. I'll show everything else that's wrong with the engine in part two. For now, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.